Hello and welcome to the Redstone Review. This is a grassroots community show that features interviews of local organization and businesses from the town of Redstone and the Crystal Valley. Our mission is to give the audience a small taste of what events and activities that are taking place in this unique town. Redstone is just one hour away from Aspen on Colorado's West Elk Scenic Byway, Highway 133. The town of Redstone, also called Ruby of the Rockies, is this beautiful, picturesque artist community located in the Elk Mountain Range in the White River National Forest and is a haven for artists and outdoor enthusiasts. You can learn to fly fish in the pristine Crystal River, take a horseback ride in the White River National Forest, or take a beautiful art class. So, it is a National Historic District full of rich history, which includes the famous Redstone Castle. Redstone is a year-round destination, which offers tourists a wide array of lodging, restaurants, an art gallery, gift shops, and antiques. You can stay the weekend or make it a day trip, or attend one of the many summer concerts. My name is Lisa Wagner, and I will be hosting conversations with local artists and members of the Redstone Art Foundation, who are preparing for their upcoming 23rd annual Labor Day weekend art show and sale. This show is taking place on August 31st, goes through Labor Day, Monday, September 3rd. So let's begin by meeting my guests. We have Jimmy Benedict is a clothing designer in her own right, the president of the Art Foundation and the event coordinator. So she's multi-talented and we so appreciate <laughs> you having you here. I would also like to introduce a few of the featured artists this year. We have Pam Wadsworth, Duck Graybill, Connie Hendricks, who will be exhibiting and selling their art in the show. So I'd like to begin with you, Jimmy, um, just to give some history of the Art Foundation and what have you. So Jimmy, this is the 23rd year of the Labor Day Weekend Art Show, and how did this successful art show begin? Well, Lisa, back in 1995, and I guess there were enough artists in Redstone that got together and said, wouldn't it be fun to have a show or exhibition in sale? And 22 of them got together and in the meeting room at the Redstone Inn in February, I believe, uh, sold their work and offered it to the public and had wine and hors d'oeuvres and met the public. And they were, had such a good time that they decided it should be an annual event. And to that end, they even started the Redstone Art Foundation. And uh, with that, the original board made a mission statement, which we still have today, and that was to generate excitement, interest, and a passion for the arts, to provide an opportunity or venue for participation for artists, to integrate the interests of the Redstone Art Foundation with the town, to establish Redstone as an art colony, to teach professionalism and technique. And so today we're in our 23rd year, and instead of being held in the inn, it's held out in a couple of large tents on the lawn at the Redstone Inn uh, Labor Day weekend. And the town comes out to volunteer and help put the show on and get it ready for the public to come and visit. And it is quite a feet to put this all together as we know in a small community that is not even a city and has funding and <laughs> we do it all with volunteers. So Jimmy, why do you think that Redstone has so many artists? Well, Redstone is a place of great natural beauty with the cliffs and the Redstone River or the Crystal River and just the canyon walls that we have and 
I can see Mount Sopris from my bedroom, you know, with the red, red cliffs too. So it just obviously attracts artists to the area. And so anybody that comes wants to paint or photograph the area. And so people came around. I mean, Frank Michaud, who has work in the Metropolitan Museum mm -hmm. of Art and the Denver Museum and in the Carbondale Post Office, came here in the 30s. And uh, other artists followed him, like Jack Roberts, uh, a Western painter, Eric Johnson, Janus Obst, and many artists are still coming today. And so it just attracts people. No, we've had many artists, and just like you here, and the guests here are all special artists in this valley, so we so appreciate that. So um, now we're going to come to talking about the scholarship program, because that's part of your mission statement, is to give scholarships to up-and-coming artists. Yes, the we tried with the other things that the Art Foundation talked about wanting to do, in keeping with those, there's been workshops and art projects in the Valley and play readings and performances and museum field trips. But the main focus today is the Jack Roberts Memorial Scholarship. And in 2003, when the Western painter Jack Roberts died, his family asked that memorials be given to the Art Foundation to start a scholarship fund that we use for students continuing in art at Roaring Fork High School in Carbondale. And over the years, uh, with the show and the memorial that was given in 2003, we've given scholarships to, I have lost the number of uh, students that we've given to, but we've we've given out more than thirty-seven thousand wow. dollars in scholarship money so to much. art students in the Crystal and Roaring Fork Valley. So that's what our money goes to today. That's amazing. It and is that in such a small town, for our little tiny for a little town and for this art foundation that is a bigger and gets bigger every year that there's funding for these young artists, which I think is amazing. So also mm -hmm. you have your sponsorships, but you also have sponsors of this event mm -hmm. that help make this all come together and make it possible. One of the things we're most excited about this year is that Gary and Monica Miller, and Gary is the son of Jack Roberts, has given us a painting of a Native American to auction off to add to our scholarship fund this year. So we're really excited because we have a lot of people in the Valley that really liked Jack and like, like his work. And so we have the opportunity now to offer an original painting for sale. And so it will be as a silent auction at the show so you can come and see it at our show over Labor Day. And then we have our other sponsors that are, one, the Redstone Inn, which gives us the space and everything to have the show, and Bethel Party Rentals that helps us a great deal with the tents and the equipment that we use. And then Alpine Bank, mm -hmm. Holy Cross Energy Foundation, Slow Groove and Barbecue, the Bob and Joyce Rankin Advised Fund at Aspen Community Foundation, and Stephen April Carver with the Redstone Castle. Those are our <coughs> major contributors this year. So we're very excited for to have all of their help in putting on the show. So thank you to the sponsors of this 23rd annual Labor Day Weekend Art Show. So we're gonna um, now kind of just focus on the art show itself. Um, why should anyone want to come up to Redstone to the art show? What's not to like? It's a beautiful <laughs> drive up the yeah. Crystal River. You have a wonderful day trip. Redstone is a great small community with places to eat or get an ice cream cone. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you have our big beautiful tents full of big beautiful art and all these people to come and visit. So it's a wonderful event. 
So um, on the schedule, which starts, what I really like is the opening reception on Friday night. And it's just a great event to meet the artists, indulge yourself in art, food, and wine. I mean, you can't get too much better than that. And then also, um, what better way to spend an evening than to be up in Redstone? and to have first choice of some of the art that is displayed Excellent. on Friday night, which yes. is great. So what should we expect to see at the art show this year? Well, you'll have some artists that you've seen in the past, like Pam here and Connie, and well, yep, Craig's sure. done that one too. And then there'll be some fresh faces that, that you might not have seen, and we'll have photography, we have painting, we have some pottery, and uh, jewelry, a, a big variety of things. Oh, good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I always love it every year. Oh, and I'd like to say you'll also see the work of this year's uh, scholarship winners, Carly Rosenthal and Paige Gianetti, that uh, they won the scholarships and are off to college this year, but we're going to be having some of their work on display. So oh, you can see cool. what yeah. we're spending our money on. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, good. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to give you a rest for a moment, okay. <laughs> since you've given so much information. Um, but um, now I would like to focus in on the artists here. And um, again, I'd like to introduce Pam Wadsworth. Um, and I'm going to give you just a little bio about her. Um, Pam has been a part-time local resident in this valley since 1974. And she started creating stained glass windows lamps, doors, and many years ago, and has evolved her talents to creating fused glass jewelry with sterling silver. I hope I'm giving the, in, the right information. She exhibits her work in selected galleries in Texas and Colorado, and occasionally does trunk shows as a visiting artist. She will be displaying and selling her unique fused glass jewelry, as well as her new passion, glass kaleidoscopes. Her jewelry, by the way, is worn in 15 other countries. So Pam, we got a lot to talk about here. Um, have you made any changes to your jewelry? And do you have new items this year? Being that I always purchase something <laughs> right here. Um, of your jewelry, but... <laughs> First, thank you, Lisa, for letting me be part of this conversation. Um, my uh, fused glass pendants are, and always have been, the things that bring most people to my booth. They're very unusual. Uh, they're simple, like the one I'm wearing, or very ornate with... Um, sterling silver wire wrapped around it. I use a lot of dichroic glass and dichroic glass is a fusible glass that has a space age chemical coating on it which makes it very reflective and very interesting. I use a lot of that in my in my work and um, each year my work changes a little bit to keep it fresh by um, layering dichroic glass in different ways. You get a great deal of depth and pendants or anything that you're using dichroic with. So um, that's my primary item, I think. I also have um, quite an extensive um, dragonfly fly collection. I think you have one of my yes, dragonflies as well. And um, that has expanded. And uh, I've tried using a torch this past year a little bit. Not my favorite aspect of working with glass, but nonetheless, I've created a few very graceful flowing pendants out of uh, borosilicate glass, which is basically Pyrex. And um, there are a few of those, and they're very interesting to see and lovely to wear. Um, and by popular demand, I have some pea pods again this year. And for those who haven't seen the pea pods, 
They are made from fine silver, which is 99% pure, versus sterling, which is 925. And um, they are fine silver with small dichroic peas in a pod. And they have been very popular in the past, but I only have a few. <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to get my wallet out right now. But totally new this year are my kaleidoscopes. And I've kind of gone bonkers over kaleidoscopes, I guess you could say. Uh, some of them, or all of them, are glass bodies, um, different sizes and different shapes. So we We've have got, them here. I have a few on the table. Um, they're primarily glass and they're soldered. Some of them have really crazy designs uh, like this particular one that's got uh, flowers made of decorative solder and costume jewelry. Uh, they're all a little bit different. The object cylinders, which are the cylinders that hold the goodies that you actually look through the scope and see, that, the things that do the reflecting um, are very different. You can have all kinds of stuff in there. This particular one um, has liquid oil flowing in the stick. I call those the Where's Waldo sticks. But um, you look through the scope and the mirrors reflect the things in the oil that slip down the stem there. Anyway, they're a lot of fun. I think for most of us, kaleidoscopes are fun childhood memories. And um, they certainly were for me. And, but they're not so easy to make. I think the greatest challenge with making kaleidoscopes is uh, the geography, or the, um, the, uh, the setting the lenses at the exact angles. There's a geometry involved with it. And unless the lenses are in perfect alignment, alignment yeah. right, your reflections will be off, or your mirrors. Um, so they are tricky to make. You use a special kind of mirror. Your mirror that you have at home hanging on the wall uh, or on your dresser is mirror that has glass uh, in the front and the mirroring, the silvering, is in back. In kaleidoscopes, you use what's called front surface mirror. And that has glass in the back oh, and the mirroring on the front. Hmm. So it... Um, but it still does the reflection that you want. It does. It, it reflects more clearly because it doesn't have glass on front of the mirror. Maybe we should use that in our bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> but anyway, I want to show mine um, because it's just a unique design and I love that. And so here we go. <laughs> I'll turn it. So, okay. Um, so over the years you have been involved in the art show so what makes it so special for you over these years that you've been participating? Well, amazingly, I think I've been participating for 11 years, and I hadn't realized that until I went back before this program and actually looked at it. Um, I love this show. I think it's probably the only show I know of that's in a great big tent out on the lawn. Well, actually, we now have an annex to the big main tent. <laughs> Um, Two big tents. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I have lots of repeat customers for which I'm very, very grateful, and I wouldn't want to disappoint them. Well, I'm glad that you're still in it because I usually buy um, items just like what I'm wearing here and the earrings and the kaleidoscope. So, um, and the kaleidoscope is my new acquisition right here. <laughs> Well, but anyway, you. yeah, I'm excited. So we'll look forward to seeing more what you have this thanks. year. Yeah. If, if jewelry isn't your thing, please come and see my kaleidoscopes. Mm -hmm. I still want one. Yes. <laughs> so now we're going to continue with Doug. And Doug, um, Great Bell, um, has been, I'm going to give you a short bio on Doug. And... Um, 
after practicing architecture for 40 years, which is a long time, Doug decided to explore the softer, more free-flowing art of watercolors. I like that in a man. That's good. <laughs> he, um, Doug decided to explore this, but before that, he came to Aspen years ago, to Aspen, Colorado, to ski for a winter and never left. And according to Doug, he still skis, but only seven, he only gives a seven day punch pass or whatever it is. <laughs> a punch pass, I don't know, because I don't ski, I cross country. So um, he was the principal in a local award-winning and nationally recognized architectural firm for 25 years with a focus on sustainable settings and design. Later in his career, he became fascinated with watercolors and pastels and combined the two of those mediums together. Doug continues to expand his artistic skills. So, Doug, tell us about your painting technique and why that particular method of bringing those two mediums, watercolor and pastels, together. Lisa, thank you, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to participate again in the Redstone Art Festival. It was a wonderful event and a great mm -hmm. location, and I fully support the scholarship program that you folks are uh, instituted here. Um, for me, when I left the architectural world, I had been uh, drawing most of my career, and, and I consider that a hardline form of drawing. And I wanted to move to an extreme, which was watercolors, because watercolors, you let the water really do its thing. It's a free flowing media, and you use it to explore what you're trying to capture. Mm -hmm. And as I progressed with that, I couldn't forget the artistic part of me that loved to draw. So with pastels, you've got a, uh, a chalk light stick that is pure pigment that you can use to come in highlight and I get the chance to draw again. So I take advantage of the free flowing features of watercolors and then come back and take pastels to highlight elements or focal points in the drawing. So the combination of the two I found is a great means to uh, express what I'm trying to achieve. Now do you do um, landscapes or what what kind of focus do you do? I focus on uh, landscapes. I've drawn way too many buildings in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do sneak one in here and there, but uh, I enjoy uh, landscapes. And I, I came to Colorado to ski, and when I met my wife, we spent our, uh, gosh, our summers hiking to all these little wonderful mountain lakes. And I have all these fond memories of our, our natural surroundings, and I'm trying to capture that uh, in my art and so that I have a memory but you also have something that enhances your memory of something that you appreciated in your life. So um, it sounds to me you like to be outside painting or do you like to be in your studio and yeah, I've, creating I've, your art? I prefer to paint outdoors uh, particularly when the weather's really good uh, what's nice about that is you get a better understanding of uh, the natural light. You know, when you paint in a studio, you're normally painting from a photo, and a photo will not give you the depth of what's really happening in a shadow, for instance. A shadow may be just dark. You may not realize that the sunlight is bouncing off of the ground, and that color of green glass may be also reflecting up into the tree surface. So by being outdoors, you really experience, and I think it opens your eyes more to what you know nature is. You have to pay attention to the window because the sun moves across the sky. So it's usually like a three-hour window where you have to um, do a painting before the light has made a drastic change. So do you like sketch when you first start? Or do you use watercolor and then start sketching? I mean, how? That's a, that's a really good question, and I'm going to do a demo Saturday morning oh, of great. my methods, so you know, please come great. see that. Um, normally you are out and something catches your eye, and you have to stop and go, what is it? And you realize, kind of, okay, it's the light reflecting off the water. And I would pull out a sketch pad and do a little thumbnail 
just to locate what's the focal point, what's the surroundings, okay. and I'm focused on values, and values are how light or dark an element is. And so you kind of develop um, what we call a notan, which is a Japanese term for a little sketch, and you put in your dark and your middle values and look at it as a, as a kind of little mini painting and go, does it visually work? And you explore it being horizontal, vertical, mm -hmm. square, and if it works, you, you take the one that works, and I will then move over to uh, some pastel paper and sketch it in lightly, just enough to know where elements are, and then pull out watercolors and use the watercolors to establish the darks and the lights and the forms. So I get a looseness of the watercolors, and you know, if it runs, great. It's an accident that may be a wonderful element within the painting. And once I've done that, I let it dry, kind of check it and say, what do I need to correct or mm -hmm. cover up? And then I'll move into the focal point and take a pastel that is of the same darkness of maybe where the focal point is and start to develop that focal point and work up or down the light dark scale as you develop that element. Okay. And uh, next thing you know, you kind of developed a little wonderful painting. No, it was fascinating. I always like to see how people, what their focus is and how they, and to be outside, there's so much going on for me personally. If I was out there doing plain air, it would be, oh my gosh, you know, is it that I want to focus on or that? But it's interesting as professional artists that you can focus in on what it is you want to bring into your painting. And that's it, fascinating, so I, I it love It is a that. very hard thing because you've got the whole you've got it outdoors <laughs> and to get it, yes, no, I, to get it down it. sometimes is really hard. So. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that information yeah. because every artist does things differently. And, um, and so you learn from that, so that helps me to start visualizing that. So next we have Miss Connie Hendricks, and she is an internationally known artist, sculptor, and painter. She's amazing. She exhibits her art in galleries from Colorado, Arizona, and Tennessee. And she has participated in at least 100 exhibitions, and it could be more, at national, regional, and local levels. So if you are a collector of art, you'll have to purchase one of her pieces, definitely, because <laughs> it'll be on sale. And even for Doug for everybody. and Pam, sorry, you're not going to be in not it, this but year. that's OK. <laughs> we'll get you next year. So anyway, so Connie, why would you participate in this art show? And you've been participating over the years. And why this art show? How can you not participate in it? I mean, the environment, the beautiful community, the cliffs, as you mentioned, Jimmy, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's presented so well. Uh, the volunteers and everyone has just really developed the show, and it's matured. And the thing that's exciting is the different artists are so talented, and you enjoy showing with them and then the interactions with them and the patrons come because they know it's going to be fresh all the time and that's great and then being an educator um, how can you not be participating because of the scholarships I mean mm -hmm. that just sells you you want to support education always in art and um, so and then they you know the way they support the community as well it's just a perfect combination so what? So over these years and being an artist, what inspires you as an artist? You know, I've really thought about that, and um, I think that the inspiration is is a long journey for us. And when does it start? And it never ends. That's the exciting thing about art. And um, I was thinking about when did I first begin art and it's a really strong memory 
I drew a kitty cat in first grade. <laughs> and everyone around me liked it and asked me to draw them a picture. And that's the first time I ever realized I could do something. And so that was encouragement, and encouragement is inspiration. And then as you, you know, go through your life, suddenly you're winning a poppy poster contest yeah. or the dental poster contest. And then all of a sudden you gain courage to enter shows. And then all of a sudden you may get accepted or receive awards. So all that is, again, inspiration. And um, people around you, the encouragement they give you. And then, you know, you keep gaining opinions about art. and how important it is and how it can be effective in the world. And the effectiveness of the art has become very important to me. Um, I love teaching the workshops and developing future artists, letting them be who they are and following what their natural instincts are. And then of course, um, you know, continuing to develop yourself and you learn from each painting you do. One painting, you know, you, you come up with the what ifs. Uh, what if I try this? So you've got to do the next painting. And then, oh, that was great, so you have to do the next painting. And so your journey continues. So you're constantly inspired. And I think that now I'm pushing myself at another stage where it's not just a picture. I'm trying to add the emotion because I want the patron or the viewer to feel what I felt. Like for instance, the sun ray, early morning sun rays coming through the golden aspen, you know, it just fills up your senses. And I do have to say there's two things that I like to remind myself and I do have them written down. One is, and you've heard this in watercolor classes, oil is a novel and watercolor is a poem. And so a poem is their spontaneous, the, the poet's spontaneous response to that moment and written in word. For us, watercolor is the spontaneous reaction we have and we do it visually with watercolor on paper. And of course, watercolor is a spontaneous medium. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect, it's a perfect combination. And um, then I do have to say that um, the challenges and the journey that you're on that I have learned that art can really be helpful in many ways in the healing of people. Mm. Um, they get well sooner or maybe they get over a tragedy in their life sooner. And if you go to a hospital, what do they have hanging on the walls? All oh, kinds of art, art and mediums. And that gives more depth. Mm -hmm. And um, then I kind of like to think that Choosing Colorado and the beautiful environment and the nature around you that fills up your senses. Yes. John Denver said it best, you fill up my senses like a night in the forest. And I feel that many times. So I may be doing a night scene or a morning scene. And I love plein air, I love painting on the spot. Love working with students. Well, I'm one of your students, still a student, and always will be a student, and um, I love your classes. So tell us what you're going to be displaying at the art show this year. I'm going to do both the mediums that I'm near and dear to. One will be the paintings mm -hmm. and then my sculptures. And uh, the paintings are going to be pretty diversified this year. A lot of times you will present a cohesive mm -hmm. you know, theme or something but been teaching so many workshops lately th and working with so many diversified students that um, that's what's coming out of me this year. So they will see realism to impressionism to abstract to experimentation, love experimentation now mm -hmm. more than anything. And um, then of course there'll be the pure watercolor and then there'll be some acrylics and then there'll be mixed medium. As you can see, I'm doing a lot of pushing in mm -hmm. the elements. And um, then my sculptures, um, mm -hmm. I have three that will be there, of which this, I brought the little one. Oh. And this is a raptor and it's done in uh, onyx. And then it's mounted on a marble base. And then the second sculpture will be a larger one. I really work large most of the time, yes. but I'm bringing three that people can capably take with them or whatever. But the stainless steel one, I'm pushing my sculpture too. In other words, 
and I'm kind of marrying the sculpture with my painting, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's my sculpture, and if you light it just right, which I don't think I'll be able to demonstrate that in the show, but if it's lit just right, it paints the shape and form on the wall. Oh my gosh. So Great. that's kind of bringing myself together, and that adds to the journey I'm on. And then the third one is uh, really mixed media, which is uh, wooden trees mounted on the Colorado Yule stone. Oh, and I do a lot of uh, sculpture in the Colorado Yule. And um, so I hope everyone will come. I hope they enjoy it. Love to talk about it. No, I'm just so thrilled that you're in the um, art show again this year. And um, again, I've loved your um, watercolor workshop, so. Oh, and uh, thank you for asking, and I'm demoing on Saturday at two o'clock, and I'll come see yours if you'll come see mine. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll come see both. And there you go. Uh -huh. Me too. And I'm doing a plein air workshop. Uh, there's a spatial group of which some of you are in, mm -hmm. and uh, you're clicking really well, and you're just ready for it. It's in September. I know. All these <laughs> wonderful things happening in Redstone, and especially um, as, as the audience and what you're hearing about the art show, we have exceptional artists that are participating in this art show. And it is one of the premier art shows in this valley now, so uh, you need to make your way up. So I want to touch base with you again, Jimmy, just to see if there's anything else you'd like to share with the viewers about the Redstone Art Foundation or the show or... We need to let you know that the opening is 6 to 8 p.m. on the Friday, August 31st. There's re refreshments there. The hours on Saturday and Sunday are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Monday, we're open from 10 to 4 to give the artists a chance to tear down in daylight. And uh, remember that 30% of our sales go to uh, support our scholarship program. And that's yeah. what's important to us. Great. So I want to thank my guests. And I'm looking forward to attending the 23rd annual Labor Day Weekend Art Show. Um, in Redstone this year, as always. Um, the show is free to the public. It is located on the grounds of the Redstone Inn. And um, again, as Jimmy was saying, the opening reception is on Friday the 31st from 6 to 8 o'clock in the evening. And this is a good time to meet the artists and enjoy appetizers and wine. The art show continues, as Jimmy said, from 10 to 5 on Saturday and Sunday. Labor Day weekend from 10 to 4. On Saturday and Sunday, um, both those days, um, Connie and Doug talked about their workshops or their demonstrations. There will be workshops, demonstration of various techniques and mediums for adults and children. Um, after the show on Saturday, I wanted to make mention there will be a free concert at the Redstone Park. Starts at 5.30. It is a free concert and it will be featuring the Dawson String Band. Um, there will also be a doggy park for your dogs. <laughs> I'm the one that created this. So anyway, um, there will be water, treats, um, uh, will be available plus a place to park your dogs while you attend the art show. And so bring the whole family. Huh? So bring the whole family, <laughs> but the dogs need to be outside the tent. But it's a cute little area and there's other dogs playing with other dogs, so it's a good combination. Um, and um, at the art show, again, all the art that's on display will be for sale. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll find that unique gift or add to your own art collection. So all restaurants, shops will be open. And for further information, I don't need to say www, but it's redstoneartfoundation.org. And I can hear Jimmy saying <laughs> org, Lisa, or not com. So. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at the art show and have a beautiful day.